Good afternoon, dead or alive. If you saw my video on the uh, walk around of my Catch 120 kayak, you probably saw the uh, cart that I made to carry it with or to move it from the truck to the water. And I've gotten several questions all along since I made that video about how I made the cart, uh, what the dimensions were, etc. So I thought I'd try to cobble together a quick video and, and show you how I built this thing. Obviously, I'm not going to be building another one. I don't need another one. But uh, I think there's a, I think it's simple enough that it'll be a, a pretty easy process to explain. I've got a uh, parts list, uh, parts and supplies, and tools. And I'll show you that here. And uh, then I'll, I'll take this. The cart breaks down into five pieces and stores in the forward uh, hatch of the kayak. And uh, so I'll stop here and, and get this thing broken down and I'll show you how to, how to make it and how, to, how I put mine together anyway. So here's the cart broken down into uh, five parts or five components. And forgive me if uh, if the video is a little awkward. I'm I'm having to do this with one hand. But you have the two bunks, the handle, the frame, the axle, and one wheel, and the other wheel. Now this whole thing breaks down. I'll, I'll pull a clip out of my other video and show you how it stows in the forward hatch. But uh, right now let's get into how you build it. Now using the parts list that I that I've shown. The uh, small pieces of PVC are uh, the the small ones that are one and seven eighths inches long are connectors, and those are they're for connecting the parts that you want to be tied up against each other. Uh, the coupler to the T here, and a T to the T here, and then uh, I'll explain all the the other lengths and all as we go. Now, you could probably adjust some of these measurements. You you could certainly make the wheelbase a little wider. Uh, I'm just going to tell you how mine is and and how it worked out for me. Okay, so we'll start building from the ground up, uh, starting with the the uh, bottom of the frame here. The uh, thing sits up this way. So we're going to take. A coupler and put the one and seven eighths inch connecting piece inside glue it uh, now I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you when to glue these because some of these parts and pieces do not get glued in this you want some of them to be able to move or to be able to come apart so you'll you'll glue the coupler to the T and we'll do that for both sides then we'll glue in you see I have a three quarter inch or a one inch to three quarter inch reducer bushing here and I've glued glued it in to the couplers now my reducer bushing is threaded so I screwed in a three quarter inch threaded plug and then with a drill and a half inch bit I found the center of the plug and I drilled out that half inch hole for the axle We'll build both sides of that, and then you'll take the the small pieces of PVC, the ones that were uh, two and three quarter inches long, and we'll slide it into the other side of the T on on each one and glue that. That can be glued in. Then we'll put another T in between those two pieces and join them together. This does not get glued. This, uh, you can actually use the handle when it's in place and, and push down and use it as a kickstand for the, for the cart so that you can move the, the kayak on top of it. So this center one does not get glued. Now moving up to the top, we have a pair of tees and we're going to put the 6 and 3 eighths inch long piece of PVC in between them and it does get glued. And then two more of the connecting pieces, the one and seven eighths inch pieces, to glue them down into the uh, top of the tees that we started with. And it gets glued. Now, 
be sure that you've got this bottom assembled before you put it together because the fact that this is glued is what keeps this from coming apart so this T will still move up and down on here but it can't come apart because this piece is all glued in and holds it together now once we have this built the the, the whole bottom frame assembly built and you've got the holes drilled for your axle go ahead and fit your your axle through now I checked a little bit uh, a while ago I was in town and, and I stopped by tractor supply and just to see if uh, if I could get some prices on some of the materials for this now I did not check on PVC pipe I did check on some of the PVC fittings and uh, the the tees were roughly three dollars a piece all the other fittings were roughly two dollars a piece the linchpins that we'll use to hold the wheels on were uh, 99 cents a piece uh, let's see the eye bolts that we use for our tie downs were a dollar and 29 cents a piece the steel tubing comes in a 24 inch piece and uh, and it was nine dollars and ninety nine cents now the the wheels when I built mine I got the wheels at a harbor freight and they were six dollars and ninety nine cents and even at, at that time a couple years ago they were ridiculously more expensive at uh, tractor supply they're like thirty five dollars or something like that and they're still six ninety nine at harbor freight so the, the 10 inch mounted tires, uh, if, if you have a Harbor Freight near you, that's where I would get them. And if not, uh, I, I think it would be worth the wait. You know, I, I think the savings would be worth the wait to order them in. Now you can use the no flat tires for this. Uh, you, you'll want to make sure that they're wide. You, you, you'll be pulling over some rough terrain sometime or in sand. And uh, you, so you'll want to make sure the, the tires are wider. Uh, minor pneumatic tires, th that's what I've got, so that's what I used. Now, we're going to leave the shaft when we put the drive shaft in. It's probably better to leave it a little bit longer for the time being un until we decide exactly where we're going to put it. So, what you can do is come one inch in from the end see if I can open up this lynch pin come one inch in from the end of the of the shaft and drill a 3 16 inch hole now you may have to take your drill bit and wallow it out a little bit to to let the uh, lynch pin fit freely through it uh, you could probably get away with using a quarter inch bit to do that but, uh, I just used a 3 16 inch and, and then wallowed the hole out after it was drilled through. So put your pin in on one side and close it. Drop a half inch flat washer onto the shaft and then drop one of your wheels. You'll notice the, the inside of the hub goes to the inside or goes toward the frame. The uh, valve stem for the tire goes to the outside so you'll drop it down on the shaft and then you'll work your frame down over it so you work the whole frame down get your shaft in through the hole in the in the uh, plug over here and all the way through to this side and then put this tire on and add a uh, half inch washer flat washer and a linch pin up here now you well you wouldn't drill the linch pin yet this thing will be sticking way up if it's still 24 inches but what you can do is once you've got everything together and and tight the way you want it take a uh, a sharpie or a pen or something and mark it and then take it back apart and use your hacksaw and cut this off to the length that you want it so when mine is put together uh, these linch pins are pretty tight up against the flat washers down here so the tubing only sticks out about an inch uh, past the the linchpin and it that doesn't even come out past the width of the tires 
So let me put this back together and, and get caught up with where we are in the instructions so far. And I'll be right back with you. Okay, so now we have the frame built. And we have the axle installed and both the tires on it. So we'll just set it aside for a minute. And we'll work on uh, building the bunks. Now, I'm going to have to put the camera down again and take this bunk apart so I can show you all the components. Alright, this is the uh, basic frame of the of the bunk on, uh, on each side. And you'll see in the parts list where I mentioned a, uh, getting two tees that were one inch by three quarter inch. And what I mean by that is on, on this tee here in the center of the, of the bunk, the bottom part of it is, is a one inch opening and, and it takes one inch pipe. And the top part on each side is three quarters of an inch and takes three quarter inch pipe. So the last two of the uh, one and seven eighths inch connectors, you glue those in to the one inch side of, of the T. Then you have two pieces of three quarter inch pipe that's seven and a half inches long and you'll glue that into the top of the T. That's all the gluing that we'll do on the bunks. Now we have two three quarter inch caps and the reason we don't glue the caps is if the foam degrades over time it, it's not UV stabilized and, and uh, you know if it gets melted or messed up or whatever you'll want to replace it so the caps are, are not glued so you can get them off and, and replace those, those foam bumpers. So we've got two pieces of pool noodle. This is three inch diameter noodle and it's got a, a three quarter inch hole down the middle of it. And we'll slide that on to the pipe. On each side. And then we put the three quarter inch caps back on. And they'll pretty much stay, stay in place even though they're not glued. So when you're putting them together, the bottom of this one inch pipe here, the uh, connecting piece, will go into the top of the tees that's still exposed uh, on the frame and they won't be glued either uh, to be able to take it apart so you glue it and, and you might even you might even have to take a little bit of sandpaper and sand around right here just to loosen up the fit a little bit so that when you force it down on there it doesn't get stuck and you can't get it back off so let me get this thing put back together and, and get caught up where we're at again Okay, so the bunks are now installed the way they go on. The only thing left, take the 22 and a half inch piece of one inch PVC and glue the one inch cap onto the end of it. That's going to be your handle. Now the handle fits into the T that I mentioned does not get glued and the reason for that is if you wanted to set your cart somewhere so that you could pick your kayak up and bring it and set it onto this you would push down on the handle that way and it holds the uh, the bunks level so you can just lift the boat up and set it on top then when you pick it back up again you can adjust it wherever you want it underneath the kayak and then after it's in place just give the handle a twist and a pull it comes out and the kayak is riding on the cart now i found that i needed to install the eye bolts and all i did here was i drilled quarter inch holes through here i used uh i don't know like two inch long eye bolts put those all the way through they have a flat washer on each side of the PVC 
to keep anything from eating into the PVC. So they have a flat washer over here on the eye side and also on, on the uh, threaded side. And then they have a lock washer and a nut. And if you're, uh, it, it, if the shank on your uh, eye bolts is a little bit longer, just use your hacksaw and cut that off. That's pretty much it. The only thing left after that is to spray paint it whatever color you want and uh, get out on the water and enjoy yourself. Y'all have a great day. Please hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you on the next one.